SR, and this is the common ratio, right? This thing in the parentheses right there, which is between negative 1 and 1, so we can use the formula. So the sum of this infinite geometric series is going to be the first term. Now, that's why you got to look at this. This is the first number you plug in. If you plug in 1 into this, you're going to get 27. That's the first term. All over 1 minus r, the number in the parentheses is r, and then now you just compute them. Or if you, if you don't know, then just write out the first three or four terms and you will see that it's geometric and then you can get it that way. Okay, 18. There's a series x minus 3 over 2 to the n. And again, something to the nth power is geometric. Find the interval of convergence. Well, the absolute value of r has to be less than 1. The thing in the parentheses is r. That's your common ratio. All you got to do is solve that, but come on. This is child's play. So negative banana and banana. Multiply everything by 2. Add 3 across the board. So x is going to be between 1 and 5. That is your interval of convergence. That means x has to be 1 and 5. We have to be between 1 and 5 in order for this series to converge. For what value of x is the series equal to 1? Okay, so here's the original series. If you plug in Okay, so again, same thing. This is geometric. So first term over 1 minus r. Again, we're using this formula here. So what's the first term? Well, since you're starting with 1, you plug in 1. x minus 3 over 2. That's the first term all over 1 minus r. And what is r? The thing in the parentheses. So first term over 1 minus r, we want to know when is this equal to 1. Solve this equation. Well, the first thing I would do is solve, simplify the left side. So multiply top and bottom by 2. And please don't forget to distribute this minus sign. So x minus 3 over negative x plus 5 equal 1. So x minus 3 equals negative x plus 5. 2x equals 8. And so x equals 4. And just make sure your answer is in the interval of convergence. It is, so that's the answer. Otherwise, there would be no solution. Okay, and these next ones, find the, all you got to know is your power series. This is child's play. So what's the power series for sine box? Oh, box minus box cubed over 3 factorial plus box to the 5 over 5 factorial and so forth. And it just says find the third term. Well, hello, simplify that, and that's your answer. Make sure all answers... Your answers need to be simplified now. 20. Write the sixth term for the power series of e to the box. you got to be kidding. 1 plus box plus box squared over 2 factorial plus box to the 3 over 3 factorial plus box to the 4 over 4 factorial plus box to the 5 over 5 factorial. And that's the sixth term, right? So there it is. Simplify that. This is giveaways right here. Write the power series of 1 plus x to the negative 3, showing the first three terms. Well, there's two ways you can do this problem. You can use the binomial theorem or long division. I like the binomial theorem. So a to the n plus n. The power of a goes down by 1. The power of b goes up by 1 plus n n minus 1 all over 2 factorial. Oh, that's ugly. Yeah. The power of a goes down by 1. The power of b goes up by 1. Plus n. n minus 1. n minus 2 all over 3 factorial. The power of a goes down by 1. The power of b goes up by 1. And you only have to show the first four terms. So just simplify that and that's your answer. Okay, 23. Using the power series for natural log 1 plus x, <clears throat> which is equal to, why don't we go 1 plus box? Is equal to box minus box squared over 2 plus box cubed over 3 minus box to the 4 over 4 and so forth. Da, da, da. What is the least number of terms needed to approximate natural log of 1.25? So that the magnitude of error is less than 10 to the negative 3, which is 1 over 1,000. 
So what do I need to put in the box here to get 1.25? Well, that would be 1 fourth, right? So we put 1 fourth in the box. So what we're doing is we're looking for the first number that's less than 1 over 1,000. So are you my mother? No. So that would be 16, 1 over 32. Are you my mother? No. 64 times 3 is 192. No, you're not my mother. And then, so that's going to be 4 to the 4th, which is 2 to the a, 2 to the 10th. Yeah, that's 1,024. Are you, is that less than 1 over 1,000? Yes. So that means add everything before it. So the answer is 3. If you add up these three terms, you will be within this of the actual answer. That's Leibniz's theorem because you have an alternating series here. And if I remember correctly, a lot of you thought 10 to the negative 3 was 1 over 100 on the last test. Come on, man. It's 1 over 1,000. Okay, now limits. 24. Limit x approaches 0. 1 minus, this looks so familiar. Okay, so if you plug in 0, you get 0 over 0. So either you're going to multiply by conjugate and look for friend, or you're going to use power series. I would use power series, but that's just me. The power series for cosine box is 1 minus box squared over 2 factorial. See, and then if you know what's going on, that's all you need. Distribute this minus sign. These cancel out. And when you split it up into separate terms, this over this is going to be what? What's this divided by that? 16 divided by 2. Is, so this is 8x squared over x squared. That's 8. And then everything else is going to go to 0. So that, that's your answer. The first term is going to be your answer because everything else has x in it. So when you take the limit as x approaches 0, everything else is 0. B, limit, x approaches infinity, x to the fifth over 5 to the x. What happens when both the top and the bottom go to infinity? N to the n thuple. This is a polynomial. This is exponential. Exponential goes to infinity faster, so the answer is 0. Limit, x approaches infinity, cosecant inverse, 2x squared plus 3x plus 4, all over x squared plus 2x plus 3. Well, if you just look at the thing in the parentheses, if you take the limit as x approaches infinity, that goes to 2, right? If the degree of the top and the bottom are the same, you look at the coefficients. And so the whole thing gets closer and closer to cosecant inverse 2, which means the cosecant of what angle is 2, or the sine of what angle is 1 half, 5 over 6. Child's play. D. Let's see if we can squeeze it in up here. What's the limit as x approaches 1 of x cubed minus 1 over x squared minus 1? Well, if you plug in 1, you get 0 over 0. Indeterminate, so the first thing we try is simplify. Factor, and again, if you don't know your difference of cubes, then do synthetic division. These cancel out. Now, can you plug in 1 and get something? Yes, you get uh, 3 over 2. Child split. E. Oh, man, we need room here. Uh, we'll just try and squeeze it in. Limit, x approaches 2, square root of 4x plus 1 minus 3, all over x minus 2. If you plug in 2, you get 0 over 0, and then you have a radical, so we're going to multiply by the conjugate of the radical expression, top and bottom. Just, be, just do careful algebra here. So that, you multiply together, is going to be 4x plus 1 minus 9, which simplifies to 4x minus 8. There we go, I'll just write it on the next step. So you can factor out the 4, and look how beautiful this is. These cancel out. Now can I plug in 2? You bet you're 50. So that's going to be 4 over 3 plus 3, which is 6. So 2 thirds is that. EF. Zero, 1 over x plus h cubed minus 1 over x cubed all over h. So if you're going to do it the long way, you're going to go, okay, plug in 0 for h, you get 0 over 0. So you've got to simplify. And you guys know how you are with fractions. Or you can go, hey, this is the definition of the derivative, remember? 
f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So that means this is the function you're going to take the derivative of. So this is the same as x to the negative 3. So the derivative of that is simply negative 3x to the negative 4. And boom, you're done. You are done. But if you want to just simplify it, go right ahead. You're going to get the same answer. OK, g, this year, we didn't do this one, so we'll just cross that out. h, limit, n approaches infinity, n over n plus 2 over, come on, how many times have we done this? OK, so this one we need to first step, hooli. You hooli it, and then you split it up into separate terms. You lift and separate. So what do we got? 1 plus 2 over n to the n raised to the negative 1. So the thing in the brackets, hey, you somebody, right? That gets closer to e squared, right? e to the box. So the final answer gets closer to e squared to the negative 1, which is e to the negative 2. Boom, that's your answer. OK, I. See, these problems come up over and over again. Is this friend? No, because x is approaching infinity. The top oscillates between negative 1 and 1, but you keep dividing it by bigger and bigger numbers. So even though it's oscillating, it's still getting closer and closer to 0. J. Hey, this was on the last test. So again, you get 0 over 0. So if you just split it up into separate terms, x over x is 1, and sine x over x is this. And since x is approaching 0, this is friend, which goes to 1. So 1 plus 1, 2. OK, limit. x approaches 2 from the left, x over x minus 2. So if you plug in 2, you get 2 over 0, which means there's a vertical asymptote there, right? So if you approach from the left, the answer is either going to be infinity or negative infinity, since you have a vertical asymptote. So plug in a number very close to 2 on the left, like 1.999. 1.99 is positive. 1.99 minus 2 is negative. Positive over negative is negative. So the answer is negative infinity, which means the graph is exploding downward like that. L, base graphs. Come on, man. What's the limit as x approaches infinity of cotan inverse x? Well, what does cotan inverse? I keep drawing this for you guys. It looks like this. So what's the limit as x approaches infinity? It's 0. Yes, you got to know your base graphs. You're going to have a lot of these where you just got to know your base graph. M, what's the limit as x approaches infinity of cosine x? Well, duh. Right? Just keeps oscillating up and down, on and on, so the limit does not exist. The limit doesn't get closer to anything. The limit doesn't exist. 25. What is the slope of the line that is tangent to the curve? when x equals ln 3. Well, to find the slope of the tangent line, you need to find the derivative. So what's the derivative of e to the x? e to the x. And when the x coordinate is natural log 3, well, the slope would be e to the natural log 3. You simply plug in the x coordinate into the derivative, and that tells you the slope of the tangent line. And what is e to the natural log 3? 3. So this is 25.5. What is the slope of the line that is tangent to the curve y equal 1 over root x when x is 4? Well, this is the same thing as x to the negative half. So the derivative of that would be negative half x to the negative 3 halves. So that's the derivative. And if you want to find the slope of the tangent line at this point, you simply plug that value of x in there. So the slope is going to be negative half times 4 to the negative 3 halves power and can we compute that? I hope so. That's going to be negative half times, what is 4 to the negative 3 halves power? That's going to be 1 over 4 to the 3 halves power, which is 8. So negative 1 16th is your answer. Remember, the derivative tells you the slope of the tangent line. And finally, oh, my voice is running out. Here is a function. Come on, you did harder problems than this on the last test. 
When is the second derivative less than 0? So first you find the first derivative, which is 4x cubed minus 24x squared plus 36x minus 7. And then you find the second derivative, which is 12x squared minus 48x plus 36. And we want to know when is this less than 0? So we factor it, x squared minus 4x. Look how pretty that is. x minus 1, x minus 3. Make a number line, 1 and 3, plus, minus, plus. We're looking for less than 0, so the answer is going to be between 1 and 3. You're going to have to do that in calculus a lot. You've got to get good at that. Hey, we did it! All righty then. That took a little more than an hour. That's why I'm tired. Good night. <laughs>